वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर लैब लेक्चर ट्वेंटी थ्री टू डे ऑन ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर पार्ट वन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम आउटलाइन ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन वी लेक्ट ऑफ कोर्स इंट्रोडक्शन इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर दैन इक्वल सर्किट दैन आइडियल एंड प्रैक्टिकल और नॉन आइडियल ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर दैन कॉमन इंडिकेटेड सर्किट्स एंड पिन कॉन्फिगेशन ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर दैन इन्वर्टिंग एंड नॉट इन्वर्टिंग एम्पलीफायर then of course we have some numerical problems like so coming to the basic concept of this amplifier the electronic circuit that produces an output quantity or voltage in linear proportional to the input quantity i mean we call it like operational amplifier and this operational fire amplifier is a high gain amplifier with output that amplifies the difference between the two input signal as given here v out equal to a v plus minus v minus where e normally order of practically even it is order of 10 to power 5 and here is we call it a is the open loop gain well this is the typical symbol we use for operational amplifier where we have a, a dominant terminal of this amplifier typically vs plus and vs minus so these are the two power supply which we normally have in the range of 12 to 15 volt or 18 volt or we have a two input differential input v plus and v minus and the v out and of course we don't have any terminal for the ground so we consider that the signal all the signal which are here either power supply or plus minus as well as the output as well as both the input they are with respect to the ground only so that's the reason the ground is not shown typically is not there in the typically in this uh, symbolic diagram of operational amplifier like so the name operational amplifier in short we call it opm was originally given to an am amplifier that could be easily modified by external circuitry to perform mathematical operation typically addition scaling introduction in integration subtraction as well as multiplication in analog computer application replaced with the digital logic in the present modern computing means this operational amplifier was the basic unit for analog computer which oh, i mean was the first and used for reasonably longer time i mean like but of course nowadays all these computation gone to digital form but its operational amplifier is still having lot of applications especially i mean operational amplifier are now used as fundamental building blocks in basic amplification and signal conditioning in active filters function generator and switching circuit and some of the application of oper operational amplifier are typically like analog computers which was of course earlier and now almost like kind of obsolete then we use in digital to analog converter when I mean, we are getting a digital signal from the normally digital processor but the most of the process which practically are there they normally operate with the analog signal so we have to convert an, i mean digital signal into analog signal uh, to typically given to physical system i mean like also and then optical fiber signal to audio decoder digital to analog converter or home theater amplifier or microphone amplifier a digital analog converter used in sound card uh, then uh, of course electronics interfaced body thermometer uh, digital thermometer i mean these are all digital you can say the now electronics measuring instruments but the signal which comes from the input to this through, through the transducer that's a analog signal which get converted into digital form through this of course using this operational amplifier in the part of the circuit like then sensors like electronics thermometer thermometer then your automatic light operated switch then dc volt polarity meter of course control of motors because the feedback and many signals of course we are sending the analog signal which you have to give to the processor that all those are processed through this operational amplifier then music player of course the current and voltage regulators used for the in practical applications like i mean we were discussing in the last time Uh, typically waveform generators because finally the waveform have to come in analog form then typically what is that these are the some application now coming to the history of operational amplifier the herold s black develop had developed the feedback amplifier for the western electric company uh, in 1920 30 and 1930 to 40 the first operational amplifier designed by carl swardjal at bell labs and 1940 to 50 the lobe julie then develop has developed an operational amplifier two input inverting and non inverting input and of course in 1950 to 60 there have been a advent of solid state 
or semiconductor electronics bipolar junction transistor for realizing the operational amplifier. And 1960 to 61, of course, bringing it was the beginning of solid state operational amplifier, uh, name as uh, normally GAP R P 45, and this in 62 GAP 45 makes the operational amplifier into circuit component as a ported module. In 1963, Robert J. Walder developed had developed the mu 702 monotonic IC operational amplifier and shortly after the mu 709 and 1967 to 68 national semiconductor introduced LM1 LM series of operational amplifier LM101 and then LM101A both by Wilder and of course in 68 to 69 Fairchild semiconductor company the famous uh, mu A741 which are very famous even today uh, by Dave Fulger and then uh, your mu a 748. So, these are the some of the how history have gone of this operational amplifier. Now, coming to the basic op uh, introduction to this operational amplifier. So, multi stage high gain amplifier having a differential input and single ended output that draws a power from the external supply voltage and it contains a number of transistor based differential amplifier stages to uh, achieve a very high voltage gain order of 10 to power practically of order of 10 to power 5. And this is typically the symbolic diagram of how it really internal structure of this operational amplifier to contain several transistor registers and free capacitors and diodes in internal circuit and the, of course, the terminal are available. As you can see there here, you have a two terminal we were calling V1 and V2, of course, signal with respect to the grime and the difference go to, I mean, as a input to the operational amplifier, which have a uh, infinite input impedance. I mean, the two input are, one is the inverting input, another is the non inverting input I mean these are the two input four and the input impedance ideally should be 0. So, that it does not draw any current from the sources or from the input supply uh, signals like also and then we have internally uh, the signal which amplify with the gain uh, a gain and the difference of the input signal is amplified and of course, it passes through the output impid ad impedance or admittance you can call it to go to the output and ideally we should say that z out should be 0 otherwise your signal will be certainly getting affected by the loading. So, we say the input impedance will be infinite and output impedance will be 0 apart from the gain it should be infinite, but of course, in a practical system all these are finite like common. So, coming to a differential amplifier the basic unit of operational amplifier is the differential amplifier a number of differential amplifier are connected uh, in cascade to form a operational amplifier as you can see here by couple of transistors I mean you have a two differential input like V in V 1 and V 2 as a input and you have a just amplifier and out and here is the output like and the output is the certainly the voltage gain G V into V 1 minus V 2 and this is the operational basic unit like as you can see a lot of transistor here that is the input stage you can clearly see which uh, I mean here for the signal then you have a second stage and then you have output stage. So, all these consist of like you can call it lot of transistors with a lot of internal circuit which to offer you as we say for the output you must have a 0 impedance and for input you should have infinite impedance. So, internal schematic of the basic operational fire is shown in the circuit on this on the left and the circuit is primarily divided into three stages like as input stage, second stage and output stage. So, the operational internal circuit can be divided in like input stage the function of input stage to amplify the input difference uh, V p minus V n and convert to a signal single ended signal and second stage further amplify the signal and provide the frequency compensation by capacitor C c and the output stage the output stage provide the output current drive capability for supplying the output I mean like. Now, coming to characteristic this operational amplifier I mean we have a differential mode operation like here we say between the two terminal as a differential we are providing input signal. So, V output is equal to A d into V i, where it is the typically a gain which is very large by which it gets amplification and we have output terminal. Uh, so, so that we got output which is symbolic and common mode operation we say V o equal to A c V i and A c is much much less than A d and you can just see here of course, the you have a here the typically the input and the you have output like which is corresponding to the AC here and it is by AD here. So, difference is there how the signal are provided across the two signal like and now you can say the output V o is A D V D plus A C V C I mean typically an output is your 
this output you can say V i 1 minus V i V d I mean like typically is here the V i minus V i 2 that is the difference of both and V c is V i 1 plus V i 2 by 2 and where A d is much much larger than A c because that you can call it the this signal which is here I mean that is also added signal divided by 2 is also kind of amplified. So, that gain should be quite small. This we call it of course, common mode rejection you define the a common signal is rejected while the difference of the two signal is amplified as it is shown on the earlier diagram and noise any unwanted input, sig input signal is common to both input and hence it is attenuated what the differential connection wire differential connection and this feature is known as a common mode rejection rate. So, as it was shown in the typically with the gain of your A c. So, common mode rejection is defined as a ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain yields the common mode rejection ratio and ideally CMMR uh, should be infinite. So, CMMR we define as A d upon A c where of course, A d is very large compared to A c. So, A c is quite small or we can call it CMMR in d b will be 20 log 10 A d by A c I am like. So, this common mode rejection so it is a measure of how well the operational amplifier suppresses the identical signals on the input relative to differential input signal and now there is a very important quantity or you can call it the term we call it slow rate. I mean the so maximum rate of change of the output versus time and let the signal has a sine wave k sine 2 pi f t uh, the signal and the rate of change of the signal with respect to time we can say will be d v by d t that is 2 pi f k into cos 2 pi f t and typically maximum rate of change will be uh, d v by d t into 2 pi f k I mean that is the typically the signal because this will be the cos 2 pi f t is 1 then only it will be maximum like um, so this we call it maximum rate of change like and slew rate required will be then 2 pi f maximum into v p and f max is the highest signal frequency and v p is the maximum output voltage required to be supported by operational amplifier. So, this becomes very important because if slew rate is quite small the signal will not be able to respond at the faster rate. So, we should have to select the operational amplifier for a particular application depending upon the requirement of your slew rate also. So, now the another term can input bias current the average magnitude of the two base current at the input terminals with the output of a specified, a specified level and we say this I A B equal to I B 1 plus I B I B plus plus my, uh, I B I I B minus by 2 and here you can say this how the characteristic of this operational amplifier you can just see here we have a here the input I mean typically two differential input and the output is shown here. So, input bias current is a problem at it flows into the external impedance and the produces the DC offset voltage which adds to the system errors like um. So, typically I F B is around 50 uh, F A that is 10 micro ampere uh, for the low and high speed operational amplifier. So, this input offset current the difference between the base current in, and the two input terminal with the output as a specify level and it is because of imbalance between the two input terminals that is due to the slight difference in the transistor characteristic of biasing uh, element because there is a lot of amplification that is why it is in a small size effect this operation of this operational amplifier as well as affect the characteristic and that is the we have to take care of this small offset also. So, that is I I O equal to I I B plus minus I I B minus and we can call it this is typically the imbalance between the two input. So, for example, for an input offset of I I O equal to 5 nano ampere and the input bias current of I I B equal to 30 nano ampere the base current at the two terminal will be uh, typically I I B equal to I I B plus I O I I O by 2 that is 30 plus 5 by 2 that is 32.5 nano ampere and I I I minus I B equal to I I B minus I O I I O by 2 that is 30 minus 5 by 2 that is 27.9 5 nano ampere. So, now, another term is a input offset voltage. So, DC voltage that must be applied between the input terminal to avoid the DC output voltage of 0 a direct consequence of finite input offset current because we do not have a ground terminal on the IC. So, that is the reason we have to take care of all the typically kind of offset in the signals like. So, if both the inputs are grounded the output voltage is not 0 and but there is a small offset like. 
So, this uh, typically we can say here again the typically the two input and output. So, V o V you can call it like V i o here is the normally depicted as a voltage source driving the non inverting plus input terminal. And there is another term of course, defined here the called diff. The variation in the output offset voltage due to the change in the input temp in the in the temperature and it depends on the IIU that input offset current and VIO input offset voltage sensitivity with respect to temperature and this we define as a V drift equal to V delta VIO upon delta T into delta T AV that is the voltage gain effective voltage gain and into plus your delta IIU upon delta T and delta 2 into RF that is feedback resistance from the input voltage that so that we get equivalent to a voltage here also from the current like amount. So, this we call it the of course, the drift here which depends on the of course, the temperature coefficient or so. So, an operational of course, the now defining like a equivalent circuit as we have already seen earlier also the operational amplifier is a active circuit element that can be used for perform linear mathematical operation like addition, subtraction, differentiation and integration and you can see the symbol that we have a differential input V and V P that is a negative input and that is positive output and this difference of which we call it applied is V x that is go to the like input impedance and then it is multiplied the gain by the gain A V of course, and then through output resistance it go to the output like of course, we have a plus minus power supply also here which is responsible for amplifying and there is a kind of saturation also where if amplification amplified voltage is more than the supply voltage certainly it will saturate on the input output or any one of the two like depends on the signal like. So, the equivalent circuit of this we can call it like a here the sub, we have input and we have input impedance typically like a of the source then followed typically here we define this as R in the voltage which it supply across this uh, typically and uh, then out, uh, output side we have a voltage source dependent voltage source that is equivalent to voltage here and plus R out resistance along with and then feeding to the load. So, what we consider here we of course, ideally say that we should have a infinite impedance of the input. So, that there is almost negligible current flows from the input side and we must have output resistance almost 0 ideally. So, that I mean there is no any drop in the typically in the voltage when we applied across the load line. And we can define of course, V out here that is V s R in R in plus R s that is corresponding to this circuit into A that is typically the gain into R L upon R L plus R out I mean from this circuit. So, that is we can call it the output signal uh, what we are supposed to get at the across the load like. So, now, this equivalent circuit we say like operational amplifiers do not have a 0 volt ground terminal which I already mentioned it ground reference is established externally via the power supply common terminal because we have a both power supply of positive and negative like I mean so and as well as input and output all signals are with respect to the ground like. So, as A called the open loop voltage gain because it is the gain of the operational behavior without any external feedback from the output to input and a practical limitations of operational behavior is that the magnitude of its output voltage cannot exceed the supply voltage that is V C C or V E. And if the linear in the linear region the curve of the output versus input voltage is approximately a straight line and its slope represents the voltage gain. And in the saturation region amplifier produces a clipped output AC waveform and V output clipped at V plus plus or V minus minus or at these two V plus plus and V minus depends on what is the input signal and how much is the amplification like. And this is you can just see the how the saturation level is there I mean on the positive side that is V C C I mean saturated virtually to the supply voltage it cannot go more than the uh, supplied voltage I mean after the amplification because that is responsible and same way is the negative side also you have a negative saturation that goes equal to negative supply voltage like. Now, coming to the difference between the ideal and practical operational amplifier or we call practical or non ideal operational amplifier. So, here you can say how what is the ideal operational amplifier as you can see the symbolic here that we have input differential input like between two terminal V n and V a p uh, that we call it V d. So, it means it should not ideally draw any current from the input that is I n equal to 0 means and I p also should be 0 that, that means in input impedance is infinite and similarly after the amplification of this voltage by A d which the input you are applying then you should have a directly output. So, it means the output impedance should be 0 and that we call it as you see here 
that is we call it like a typically ideal operational loop five. So, we can call we can call it infinite open loop gain a equal to infinity and infinite input impedance that in equal to infinity and zero output impedance that is g out equal to zero. So, that there is no drop in the voltage and zero common board gain that is MMR is infinity and infinite bandwidth or slew rate. So, zero inputs offset that V i is zero or I o zero as well as drift is also zero. So, that we call it the condition for or you can say comment of ideal operational amplifier like I mean the parameter all these we have de already defined while we were discussing about the operational amplifier equivalent circuit as a symbolic diagram and many terminology like. Now, coming to the practical operational amplifier because in practice you cannot have all these parameters really co correspond to ideal. So, practical is here again V p we have a V n and V p and we have a R in ok and we have again R out also in this case and that is the equivalent circuit that we have to represent the V d input and that R in is the uh, input impedance and then we have a of course, the gain multiplied voltage with the R o output resistance which goes to the output. So, a large but finite gain 20,000 to 2 lakh is the order of the gain usually or you can call it 2, 2 into 2 to power 2 into 10 to power 4 to 2 into 10 to power 10 to power 5 and R is also large but finite that goes from 0 0.3 to 2 mega ohm and R out is small but not 0 like I said 75 ohm order of that and bandwidth also finite like capacitance takes effect and CMMR is 70 to 90 dB. I mean that is from typically you can call it 3000 to 30000 and slew rate is also finite that is 0.5 volt per microsecond and V i is also typically order of 2 to 5 millivolt and I o also 20 to 200 to 20 to 200 nano ampere and I f V is also order of 800 to 50 nano ampere. So, these are of course, the quantity which are going to the on other extreme, but they are not of course, either 0 or infinite like I mean also. So, this we call it practical or non ideal operational amplifier with these parameters like of course, these parameters change a little bit from one operational amplifier to another operational amplifier as well as from one make to another make also like. Now, coming to common IC integrated circuit and pin configuration which we are having available integrated IC chip for these operational amplifier and this is the typically a very commonly used IC and pin configuration of 741 general purpose operational amplifier where we have a typically they are available from separate manufacturer including the tax size and we have a 8 terminal and that uh, of course, for marking the terminal you can identify the dot is corresponding to I mean if you keep it that cross that give you idea and the dot mentioned to 1 and you have a 1 as a offset null then inverting input 2 and non inverting input 3 then your minus supply 4 and 8 is not connected 7 is plus supply and 6 is output and 5 is the offset null. So, these are the 8 terminals in any operational amplifier I mean typically of your 8 pin operational and this is very much in use of course, it has a certain limitations and that is the reason many other operational amplifier for specific application or with very fast low rate I mean it does not have a that much fast low rate, but of course, it is used for very extensively and they are very now available very cheap also like them. So, use in general purpose amplifier for active filter arithmetic circuit voltage computer waveform generator and regulated power supply and another commonly used I see is LM358 typically for use for uh, this is LM series there are large number of operational fire in this series, but of course, this this is one of the quite famous. So, here we have a low power dual channel operational amplifier. So, here we have a dual operational amplifier into the one and you can clearly see in 8 pin. So, we have a one as a ground one is positive power supply we do not have a here negative power supply and we have a now output and input uh, inverting input and uh, non inverting input. Similarly, for the second unit also we have output and we have inverted inverting input and non inverting input. So, it gives you like a typically as a two uh, you can call it the two operational IC in, in one chip you have a two operational amplifier for you in many applications where required for many many such applications where all those I mean terminals are not required which are mentioned in the 741 like. So, use in transducer amplifier based on the sensing weak electrical external signals like temperature force pressure and sound and light. So, another commonly chip is typically is UA 747 which is a 14 pin dual operational amplifier. So, this is also double operational amplifier as you can see here. So, we have a virtually starting with the pin we have a non inverting and non inverting 1 and 2 for first unit then we have offset then V minus as a 4 terminal that is V minus is normally common for many and offset 5 
then we have a second operational input as a I mean you can call it like a non inverting and then inverting output 4 second operational amplifier and the we have of course, 14 as an offset null 4 a operational amplifier and 13 as a V 1 plus and the output 1 is the 12 terminal 11 terminal is not connected and 10th connector is output 2 and 9 is V 2 plus and of course, the 8 is offset null 2. So, these again have a dual operational amplifier in the same one chip like I mean also. So, that you get a better uh, density and number of the chips are also reduced for some specific application because there are two operational amplifiers in the one chip like. So, use an analog signal processing circuit such as peak or um, envelope detectors. These are very commonly a third a commonly IC chip like LM339 very famous like a 14 pin 4 channel operational amplifier. So, we have a 4 operational amplifier here and you can just see in 4 only it is in 14 pin. So, 3 pin are required for every uh, let us say operational amplifier the 2 input as well as 1 output that becomes the typically 12 and you have a VCC and ground. So, these are the only terminal here for this 4 input operational amplifier. So, starting from uh, output 4 second and 1 then you have a power supply VCC then you have input as a negative then positive 5 and then input negative and input positive for the second so operational amplifier and 14 the output 3 and 13 is output 2 and 12 is the ground and then we have a uh, positive input for fourth open and negative input for fourth in operational amplifier and the input positive input for third um, operational amplifier and your typically 8 as a negative input for the third amplifier. So, you have a four operation amplifier and these are very much typically used for many applications because you get very compact four comparator or you can call it the four operational amplifier into single chip. So, use in low level sensing and memory applications in automotive or industrial settings, measuring instrument and timing and oscillators. Now, another chip which are taxed by TL02 which have a quite large of uh, slew, high slew rate with the 8 pin 2 channel operational amplifier as you can see here. I mean you have a typically one as a output of first unit and seven is the output of second unit and you have a two as a inverting input for first unit, three as a uh, your positive input and uh, 5 and 6 positive and negative input for the second operation 7 is the output and of course, your 4 and 8 is the typically the you can get 4 is the negative supply and 8 is the positive supply like um, these are the all terminal configuration mentioned here for this like. So, this is also in 8 terminal you have a 2 operational amplifier dual operational amplifier in the one chip like. So, offers high slew rate and low input bias and, off and offset current and low output diff and use in high speed integrator fast DA to A converter and sample and hold circuit like. Now, coming to inverting and non inverting amplifiers. So, we have here typically like you have again the symbolic representation of this operational amplifier which is by typically a triangle and we have output terminal and we have a plus VCC minus VCC and we have two differential input like a minus and positive and from positive we have a input current like flowing through here with the differential input VD and RD the input impedance and RO is the output input impedance and with the gain of course, we have a input which we apply with the amplification. So, we can say here V O is much lesser than V C that is the order 5 to 15 volt I mean and typically E G for V O is 10 volt and gain is 10 to power 5 and V D is 0.1 millivolt like and V D is the very good approximation in the most cases virtual ground and thus at the operational input terminals there exists a virtual short circuit and also there is a no current through the input terminal to very good approximation that is I in almost 0. And in this operational amplifier where we apply the signal bit to the inverting input and the non inverting input is grounded with respect to ground we are seeing output and we have input resistance and of course, feedback resistance R f. So, here in this case we can call it for by concept of virtual ground we say I equal to 0 that is the current drawn for typically by operational amplifier. So, in that case if it is 0 then these two current will be you can call it opposite to each other. So, I 1 will be this I 1 will be equal to minus I f and V you can call it will be V dash both are equal to 0. So, definition uh, as a we can call it a negative feedback uh, concept is achieved when the part of the output is feedback to the inverting input terminal of the operational amplifier as we mentioned earlier and this is the symbolic representation how we represent it. So, we have input signal we have a feed with the feedback output signal here and then this the error signal which go to operational amplifier of infinite gain 
and this is what we have with the typically with the negative gain. So, why negative feedback? Because when devices gain is simply too large like unknown and its bandwidth is too narrow, the negative feedback is used to set the gain uh, to a specific precise value ir irrespective of the internal gain and increases the bandwidth of operation. So, we can say here like you can call it the input voltage I mean in this operational fire with the typically with the negative gain the feedback of beta here and there we have a load I mean output loading resistance through I load current flow there output voltage and the input differential. We can say input voltage is V plus V f that is the two signal here and the output is V o equal to A A o 1 V and feedback voltage is V f equal to beta V o or beta A 1 V and we can say V i from here we can calculate this will be equal to 1 plus beta A o i into V and the now the closed loop gain will be A c 1 equal to V upon V i and that is A o 1 divided by 1 plus beta into A o i where beta A o i is much much greater than 1. So, A c 1 is only 1 upon beta and we can call it this as a sacrifice factor is A o i divided by A c 1 and that normally equivalent to your beta into A i 1. A 1. So, we can say what is the effects of need negative feedback? It fixes the gain at a precise value using external circuit uh, elements and thus becoming illuminated to the variation of oper operational amplifier open, open loop gain with the which may change because it is a very high value, it might be changing because of many physical parameters like temperature or otherwise. So, it, it causes to it, it tends to reduce stabilize the operation, reduce the fluctuation, and reduces the effect of device nonlinearity. And what is the it increases the bandwidth of the system by a factor of s and exercise control over the input and output impedance of the circuit and the system gain decreases by a factor of s thus there is a trade off between the bandwidth and gain typically and now this is like a, you can call it inverting amplifier the input to the is given to the negative terminal here with the feedback and reverse the polarity 180 degree shift of the input signal while typically amplifying it. So, you can say by virtue of the ground we say V typically V o equal to V dash equal to 0. So, that is the reason we call it like a I 1 equal to I f or you can call it V i upon R 1 will be equal to V o upon R f or we can call it the voltage gain now will be V o upon I e and that will be minus R f upon R 1 and this gain you can set by of course, value adjusting the value of the R f as well as R 1 like with the if negative with negative feedback like so gain you can accordingly select according to your application requirement so that there is no saturation and your signal are within the prescribed limit like so input is applied to non inverting terminal and output has the same polarity as the input signal so you can call it because now signal is applied to put your non inverting input so by virtue of the ground we can say v equal to v dash that is vi and i1 equal to minus if so we can say minus vi typically upon R 1 equal to V i minus V o upon R f and we can say A v will be now V o upon V input that will be 1 plus R f upon R 1. So, here you can say it is a non inverting input, but now you can just see again you can set the gain corresponding to a value of R f or you can make this gain according from R 1 and R f, R f as a finite gain or your predetermined gain or design for a particular gain this non inverting amplifier also. Now, there are some quick questions we can say what is the output waveform of the circuit? I mean for when you are applying the 1 millivolt 1000 hertz typically input here. So, we can say it is a whether it is a sine wave, square wave or short tooth wave or tangular wave. So, it is a V square wave the reason being why it because we are not connected any feedback and this is like a open loop gain is very high. So, your input signal even of 1 millivolt will saturate corresponding to your power supply of plus minus. So, you will get a like a square wave and that is the reason answer is B. So, the second is the operational amplifier shown here in this figure has a slow rate of 1 millivolt per second. The unity gain frequency is 1 megahertz and the output saturation level is a plus minus 14 volt that is the power supply and what is the maximum output frequency in kilohertz at which the undistorted output can be obtained. So, from this certainly you can find out how much time it takes according to the slow rate to increase the voltage. So, it comes like 11.36 kilohertz and typically tolerance is plus minus 0.36 volt and of course, acceptance answer is 11 to your 11.76 like plus minus on both the side like. So, now the third is find the full power bandwidth in kilohertz of the LM741 operational amplifier given that the slow rate is 
0.5 volt per microsecond and the guaranteed maximum output voltage 12 volt. So, here the typically answer is your 6.63 with of course, tolerance of 0.63. So, it will become your 6 to 7.6. Similarly, the your different simplifier is a common mode gain of the 0.2 and a common mode rejection rate of 3250. So, what will be the output voltage in volt and if single ended uh, voltage of 7 volt is there applied to. So, of course, I mean you can just have a typical solution corresponding calculate the voltage uh, from the feedback operational amplifier corresponding to that. So, applying the simple formula you will just will be able to solve all these quick questions like I mean. So, now after these quick questions we come to the solved problem that is a little bit involved solved problem. So, comes with the numerical example of 1. The problem is an operational amplifier with differential input gain of 4000 is supplied with the input voltage of V i 1 equal to 150 micro volt and V i 2 equal to 140 micro volt. So, determine the output voltage if CMMR is 100 or 10 to power 5. So, differential voltage will be your V d the difference of these two input 150 minus 140 that is a 10 micro volt and common volt of course, is the according to definition I mean V c will be V i 1 V i 2 by 2 that becomes like 145 micro volt. Now, dip, depending upon the typically output voltage will be V o equal to A d V d plus A c V c or A d V d 1 plus A c V c divided by A d V d and then output I mean if we have define this as a in terms of C M M R. So, we can say V o equal to A d V d 1 plus 1 upon C M M R and V c upon V d d that is the gain we call it like a C M M R. So, now putting C M M R 100 putting the value here it comes 45.8 volt and C M M R 4 10 to power 5 putting the value it comes only typically or 40.006 millivolt like. And now coming to the example numerical example 2 the problem calculate the CMMR in DB for the pressure amplifier shown here where we have a differential mode with the 0.5 volt applied here and point minus 0.5 volt and that becomes equal to typically here output is 8. So, we can call it input is almost like a milli 1 millivolt to equal to 8 volt and common volt will be of course, the here the uh, adding of the both to divide by 2 and that get typically like 12. So, 1 milli volt will be only applied here and then you get a 12 milli volt like. So, now the differential gain here given by A d equal to V upon V d that is 8 upon 1 milli. So, 8000 and the your common mode gain will be A c upon V c upon V 12 m upon 1 m that is a 12 and C M M R will be now A d upon A c that is 8000 divided by 12. So, it is a 666.7 and CMMR in dB that we calculate 20 log 10 A D upon A C that comes 56.48 dB. Now, coming to numerical example 3, the problem for, for an operational amplifier having a slew rate of S R equal to 2 volt per second, what will be the maximum flow loop voltage gain that can be used when input signal varies from 0.5 in 10 seconds. So, here for voltage gain of V O equal to A into V I, so delta V I upon delta T will be A delta V I upon delta T and we can call it A equal to delta V upon delta T, delta V i upon delta T. So, it is typically S r divided by delta V i upon T. So, it is given already slew rate 2 upon 0.5 by 10 that becomes like a 40. Now, coming to numerical example 4, the problem is determine the maximum frequency of an AC input AC signal of 0 0.02 volt peak that may be amplified without any distortion using an operational amplifier with slew rate of 0.5 volt per second and slow loop gain of 24. So, now the peak output voltage is given here V o equal to 24 into with the gain into 0 0.02. So, it becomes 0.48 and the maximum signal frequency is obtained by because of slow rate f max upon S r upon 2 pi f 0 V 0 that is 175 into 10 to the power 3 hertz. Now, coming to numerical example 5, the problem is the determine the output voltage drift for the circuit shown below here as a target temperature of 80 degree centigrade. Assume that the circuit has been nulled at 25 degree Celsius centigrade and the uh, closed loop voltage gain is 100. So, input null offset voltage and current for the operational amplifier with temperature uh, as delta V 1 T upon delta T 5 mic micro volt per centigrade and delta I T by T equal to 1 nano second per degree centigrade with the of course, feedback resistance of your 100 kilo ohm. So, we can say V drift will be delta 1 T upon delta T into delta T A V plus delta I delta T into delta T R F, R F value is given already 100. So, we can put the value of all these parameters are given here. Delta V I T upon delta T 5 micro volt per degree centigrade, delta I T 
delta t 1 nano ampere per sec per centigrade and delta t 80 minus 25. So, it is a 55 degrees Celsius and A V 100 and R F 10 to power 5 uh, typically ohm. So, V diff will be your 5 putting the value here 5 into 10 power 6 into 55 into 100 plus typically 1 into 10 power 9 into 55 into 10 power 5 volts. So, it becomes V diff equal to 0 0.0275 plus 0 0.0055 that becomes 0 0.033 or 33 millivolt. Now, coming to a numerical example 6 following the, the open loop gain of a amplifier is 200 operating from DC of F 1 equal to 0 to an upper cut of frequency F 2 O of 10 kilohertz. If the feedback factor is 0 0.04, what is what are the closed loop gains A C 1 and upper new cut of frequency of F 2 T. So, here A C 1 is equal to A O upon 1 plus beta I Y putting the value here we get A C 1 equal to 22.22. And sacrifice factor we can find out from A O 1 A C 1 that 200 by 22.22 that is 9 and F 2 F 2 C lower equal to F C typically of open loop. So, it becomes F 2 closed loop equal to 10 into 10 k into 9 that is 9, 9 t kilohertz. Now, coming to problem 7, the problem is find out V O for the circuit shown here. We have a typically two operational amplifier connected virtually in the two input with the even with the cascading kind of circuit. So, consider the inver your inverting amplifier at the first stage. So, it is V 3 upon V 2 uh, equal to minus R upon R that is V 3 equal to all R D 2 R given R. So, that is V 3 equal to minus V 2 and now for the second operation amplifier reduces to as V O equal to V dash equal to 0. So, KCL typically at minus terminal here it will be V 1 minus 0 upon R 1 equal to plus minus V O 2 minus 0 upon r 1 equal to minus v of r, r 2 and here it comes 1 upon r 1 equal to into 1 v o v 1 minus v 2 equal to minus v o upon r 2 and from which we can get v o equal to r 2 upon r 1 into differential input v 2 minus v 1 like. So, now coming to numerical example 8 the problem is given v i equal to 1 volt in the circuit shown here find the output voltage v o for output current and output current. So, we have already here it is on 1 volt here and these are all are the resistance are given as a given the typical load resistance as a feedback resistance. We can say V O equal to V dash equal to V I equal to 1 volt and as I, I, I equal to 0. So, we can say V I minus 0 upon 5 k equal to V O minus V I by 40 k that is feedback. So, we can say V O equal to 9 volt and I O will be V O upon 20 k plus V O minus V I upon 40 k that becomes I O equal to 0 0.65 milli ampere because one current flows here another flows to this side line. Now, coming to numerical example 9, the design a non inverting amplifier with a gain of 26 dB and a input impedance of 47 k. So, first and you can just see here the signal for non inverting input with the feedback of inverting input with the resistance all are given other than uh, the load typical input impedance. So, finding the first turn 26 dB in ordinary form, so 26 equal to 20 into log 10 A. So, A B a voltage gain will be 10 to power 1 minus 3 that is 20 and 1 plus R f upon R 1 20. So, R f I of 19 it can then we can choose R i equal to 1 kilo ohm then R f becomes typically of 19 kilo ohm as it is shown here. So, now coming to the numerical problem 10 a 741 operational amplifier slow rate of 0.5 volt per second is used as a part of the motor control system. If the highest reproducible frequency 3 kilohertz and the maximum output voltage is 12 kilo 12 volt peak does slowing error occur. So, maximum frequency supplied supported by the operational amplifier is f max equal to uh, 663.1 hertz because of the limitation of slow rate and f max will be slow rate upon 2 pi v 0. So, that is putting the value 0.5 uh, volt per microsecond to 2 pi into 12. So, for this application 741 is 2 x as fast as it needs to be. So, therefore, slow rate does not take place like. So, now coming to numerical example level 11, determine the VO and VO and IO in this circuit where you have been given the input volt like a 2 supply volt and with the input feedback ratio 20 k r with the typically the kind of potential difference with this. So, taking this circuit so solving typically the on inverting terminal. So, typically or you can call it 2 upon 10 typically current coming from this side will be plus equal to V 1 upon 20 
and that equal to 0. So, V 1 will be equal to minus 4 V and here for KCL typically at V 1. So, we can say V 1 upon 5 plus V 1 upon 20 plus V 1 minus V 2 by 4 equal to 0. So, we give V o equal to V 2 V 1 and that is minus 8. So, output current given here I o equal to minus 8 upon 4 plus minus 8 minus minus 4 by 4 that becomes minus 2 milli ampere from here. Now, coming to numerical example 12, determine the output voltage V o in the operational wire here which where input is given, 2 input is given 6 volt and 2 volt with the feedback ratio of 20 and um, 40 kilo ohm. So, now putting a KVL typically at the node A, so we can say V A minus uh, V O by 40 K that is the feedback minus 6 equal to 6 minus V A upon 20, I mean the current going from this side T 2 current. So, V A minus V O equal to 12 into minus 2 V A. So, here comes V O equal to 3 V A uh, volt here minus 12 and we can say V A equal to V B that is for typically you can call it the virtual ground both are equal and that is 2 volt. So, we can say V O will be equal to 6 minus 12 putting the value here of V O and this will be minus 6 volt. So, coming to numerical problem 13 find the output voltage for the circuit shown here that V output where we have a typically giving to 6 volt and with the this network of resistances along with the uh, feedback resistance also. So, we can say here in this circuit the KCL at the typically positive terminal we can say V O on this divided by 12 that is the one current V O plus minus V O that is the feedback divided by 8 and V plus I mean here with the ground of minus 6 volt by 6 equal to 0. So, we can say V O equal to 3 V O plus minus 8 and by DC voltage division I mean we can say here the V minus will be equal to V O that is 4 by 4 plus 2 into V O that is from this feedback network and that is 2 by 3 V O and we can say V O from here will be your 3 into 2 by 3 V O minus 8. So, V O becomes a typically 8 volt. Now, coming to numerical problem 14 determine the input impedance and output voltage for the operational circuit below RL is the load resistance I mean typically is given the input signal sine wave with the 5 uh, input resistance of source and 20 kilo ohm as a feedback with R L. So, solving this, so we say V O minus equal to 0 because this is 0, so this is also 0. So, input impedance is typically here V in upon I in, so that is 5 kilo ohm which is given here and V O will be A equal to V I. So, A is here minus R F upon your R 1 that is minus 20 upon 5 k that is minus 4. So, V O will be 100 millivolt which is given here into minus 4 that is minus 400 millivolt like. There are some numerical problems similarly which you can solve based on the similar what we already discussed it about this and these are the some of the references from which we have built up this uh, lecture and thank you very much.